Good morning everyone and welcome to this week's service from Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in Northampton. My name is Teresa Young and I'm the children's and family worker. Later on we'll be hearing from our senior pastor, the Reverend Paul Lavender, who will be preaching on a passage from John. Now, if you're from Mount Pleasant, don't worry, you haven't tuned into Kids Church by mistake. This morning we've come to focus on Jesus. Let's spend time putting aside anything which might distract us. Give it to God. He can deal with it. Psalm 95 says, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands form the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. Shall we pray? Lord God, we come now to worship you. Help us to focus our eyes on you. When we look at your awesome power, that which distracts and worries us become like drops in the ocean. We come to worship you with our whole hearts in spirit and in truth. Mighty God, you are amazing, more than we can imagine. May our worship be glorifying to you and lift up your name and exalt you to the highest place. We surrender ourselves to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. All to Jesus I surrender All to Thee I freely give I will ever love and trust
I surrender all. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. In the temple area, he saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and doves for sacrifice. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging foreign money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and the cattle scattered the money changers coins over the floor and turned over their tables then going over to the people who sold doves he told them get these things out of here stop turning my father's house into a marketplace then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures passion for god's house will consume me but the Jewish leaders demanded, what are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What? they exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build this temple and you can rebuild it in three days. But when Jesus said, this temple he meant his body after he was raised from the dead his disciples remembered he had said this and they believed both the scriptures and what jesus had said
Shall we pray? Lord God, we pray that you will take our lives, mould, shape and melt them so that they glorify you. Use us, Lord, to increase your kingdom. Guide us in the direction you would have us go, both as individuals and as a church. Show us where you want us. Show us how to live the lives that you have called us to. We pray too for Paul as he brings your word to us today. Open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us through him. Bless him and guide him to lead us down your path. Thank you for him and for what he is going to bring to us from your word. Amen. And there is none like you No one else can touch my heart like you do And I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you Oh, there is none like you can touch my heart like you do and I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you So good morning. It's good to be with you and good to be able to share from God's word. Thanks for the Bible reading earlier, Craig, from John chapter 2. We're thinking about Jesus in the temple and the cleansing of the temple uh, that Jesus undertakes. I don't know about you, but one of the things in which I've been engaged during lockdown has been clearing up and tidying up both in the loft and in my study as well and also in my wardrobes. Now you may be getting rid of things that you consider to be clutter, you may be getting rid of things that you've either not worn or that you've not used for some time. <laughs> that sounds like a bit of a plug for the open door shop at the moment because I'm sure Kath will be very pleased in time to receive such things. But the point is, is that during lockdown, many people have undergone a year long spring clean. And I just wonder whether in these days God is inviting us to do a spring clean in our lives. In the account in John's gospel, 
Jesus comes, as it were, into the temple precincts and he observes what's going on. The temple tax is being paid. People are uh, exchanging money because they didn't want to buy or they weren't allowed to buy uh, the sacrifices, the offerings that they would make with anything that bore a human image. Now, that wasn't technically necessary, but it was one of those add-ons that the uh, temple authorities had added in. They thought that it was somehow sacrilegious. We don't need to waste time on thinking about the rights and wrongs of this. But Jesus observes things going on in the temple and some things that he thinks get in the way of people coming for the real purpose uh, to the temple. And that is to encounter God. And so when he sees the people at the money tables, when he sees the doves and the cattle and the sheep, Jesus doesn't set the doves free or he doesn't do anything of that. His objection is with the attitudes, the behaviour of the money uh, changers. And he drives them out of the uh, temple. And he drove them all out. He got made them take away the sheep and the cattle. And he told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here, stop making my father's house a marketplace. The temple was a very important place. It was the centre for where people would meet God. But also more than that, it was also the beating heart of the community. All of life was represented there, the civic the political and the religious was centred there. The cultural life of the nation was focused in and around the temple too. But most importantly, God was to be found there. And Jesus comes to the temple around the time of Passover. It wasn't exactly Passover. It says the Passover was approaching. And we don't know whether this was, as John places it, at the beginning of the ministry of Jesus or whether it was later on. John put it, he puts it here, I believe, because he's making some important points about God moving uh, among his people and how Jesus is one of the, the signs of God's presence. And there's lots of signs in John's gospel. It all points to the nature of who Jesus is. But right here and right now, Jesus goes into the temple courts and the uh, disciples later on remember that verse from the Old Testament, from one of the Psalms, where it says, zeal for your house will consume me. Passion, you might say, for God's house. But what does Jesus go on to say? He says it's not just about uh, the physical house, not just the temple walls or the building, because when he's asked to give a sign of his authority, he says, destroy this temple and I will raise it up in three days. What's he talking about? Well, he's talking about himself and he's talking about the fact that his body was going to be uh, offered on the cross. He was going to be killed Human beings were going to attempt to tear him down. But on the third day, he would be raised up again. The Jews misunderstood. They didn't quite get it. One of the reasons, and we shouldn't be too hard on them, because in verse 22, it says, after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he'd said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. It's a reminder to us that the gospel story really only makes sense to people after they've encountered the risen Lord. And that's why we keep on holding out to people the story of who Jesus is and why he came, because it's so important to meet him and to know him. And so this is a passage in the Bible that speaks about Jesus acting in his father's house with authority, 
It's about Jesus speaking about him being the very embodiment of God's presence. Do you remember in the beginning of John's Gospel, we read, the words became flesh and dwelt among us. So we've seen his glory. The glory is the one who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so when we look at Jesus, Jesus reminds us here, we should be seeing the glory and the power and the authority and the character of who Jesus is. And so Jesus comes with zeal. He comes with power. He comes with authority. He comes as God himself, bearing the very image, the stamp of God. And he challenges us to respond to him. So let me invite you to think about this story in three ways. Firstly, don't forget what real worship is about. Worship is about intimacy with the Father. It's about reverence. It's about awe. It's about drawing close to God and encountering his presence. Now, down through the centuries, Christians have had lots of questions about what worship is and what the church is. Some people have said that worship is where the church is. So when you found the church, that's almost the end of mission. You just go establish a church, that's it. Some people say that the church and worship is where the word of God is preached and where the sacraments, whether there's two or seven or any number, where they are proclaimed and celebrated. But I believe that God would remind us through this passage and through the words of Jesus in the accounts of John that true worship is about encountering God's presence and knowing that wherever God is then we can meet him, we can encounter him and it's not limited to place or space. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 the Apostle Paul writes these words. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. In other words, once we've encountered the living presence of God, once we've responded in faith towards God, repentance towards God, accepted his gift of new life, then we are to be bearers of God's image, for we are God's temple. His presence will be with us. Do you remember the promise to Moses in Exodus? My presence will go with you. And, you know, Jesus promised his disciples that he would always be with them. And so that's why worship is so important, encountering God. But we don't need to be within four walls. We need to make ourselves aware of God's presence wherever we are. And to encounter God through his word, reading the Bible, by his spirit, encountering him in communication, listening for him and speaking to him. So encountering his presence... Jesus goes into the temple and has zeal and passion for people to meet with God. Do you have that same passion? And secondly, and following on so importantly from this, we're reminded in this passage not to ignore God's holiness. You know, Jesus goes into the temple and sees things, as it were, that he believes are blocking people from encountering God. Now, I began by asking you whether during lockdown you're clearing away and clearing out your cupboards and clearing away in your loft and clearing out your wardrobes or even knickknacks around your house. Because sometimes we need to make space in our homes, particularly if we're wanting to put something else there. So you might um, have been given a, uh, a sort of a painting or a picture and in order to make proper space for it, you need to get rid of something. Well, in order in our lives to make space for God, there may be things that we need to get rid of. There may be rubble. There may be ruins. There's the need for repentance. 
to ask God to cleanse us. Because to be sure, God wants us to know the freedom of meeting him. But so often there are things that get in the way. And sometimes we can confess Jesus as Lord in one moment and then in our lives the next we get in the way of God's purpose. Like Peter when he made that great confession of faith, Jesus said to him, you are a building block, you are Petros. But later on, just a few moments later, uh, Jesus has to say to him, you are a stumbling block to me. Are we a building block or a stumbling block? Are we allowing God to clear away the, ru the rubble? Are we a living stone that's useful to God or are we just dead rubble? And so I want to invite you today not to ignore God's holiness, his passion for things to be right in your life. In the temple, Jesus goes in and sees things that are not right and he wants to clear them away. What does Jesus see in your life that needs to be cleared away in order that he can lead you on so that you can be more useful for him? So don't forget what worship is about. Don't ignore God's holiness. And thirdly, don't reject and don't ignore God's gift of new life for all. You know, Jesus said, zeal for my father's house. This is my father's house. And so it's a reminder that because Jesus is speaking about his father, this is good news and this is work that God wants all people to know about. You see, Jesus Christ is the living temple of God here. He's in his body. He's bringing and bearing God's presence to people wherever he goes. Now, after Jesus ascended into heaven, he breathed on his disciples. The Holy Spirit sends the Holy Spirit to his disciples so that they may be the, the bearers of God's image and God's presence wherever they go. That includes you and me. Jesus, you see, is God's supreme gift. He's better than all the others. And we can experience the presence of the risen Christ in our lives wherever we are, because though we are human beings, we have still the opportunity to bring God's presence. If we will allow the Holy Spirit of God to indwell us, we can take the name and the presence and the power of Jesus with us. And as Jesus himself said, you can do greater things than this. God has a passion for people to meet him and he wants to clear away the rubbish that we allow to accumulate in our lives. And dare I say it in our churches sometimes. So what does Jesus want to clear away in your life? And for all who are listening, whether you're here in Northampton or indeed other places around the country, what does Jesus want to clear away in our churches so that people might meet with Jesus. Don't forget what worship is about. It's about encountering the living presence of God. Don't ignore God's passion for holiness and allow him to clear away the rubble and the rubbish in our lives to make room for him. And don't forget about his passion for all so that we may allow him to work in us so that other people may see the beauty and the presence of God within us. And in that way, Jesus will be lifted up. And as he himself said, when he is lifted up, he will draw all people to himself. God bless you today. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close No thing can compare, you're our living hope Your presence I've tasted and seen 
Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone And your presence, Lord Good morning and thank you for tuning into the service at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church today. 
Our intercessory prayer is for the men and women who have the responsibility of translating the Bible all around the world. And for the children, as they go back to school tomorrow morning, we'll also be praying for their safety, the safety of their teachers and the impact their going back may have on the wider society. So let's go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, we praise your name, we adore you, we magnify your name because you are a great God. You're an awesome living God, the one and only true God. At your name, every tongue will confess, every knee shall bow because you are God. Through you, with you and in you, there is none like you, O oh Father. And for that, we worship you. We sing your praise. We sing your name in glory. Father God, come and be with us as we congregate this morning through this medium to adore you, to worship you, to give you thanks for the things that you've done through to us throughout the years, through this week. And even now, as we pray, as we sing your praises, we want to say thank you. Thank you, oh Father, because it's not by our special grace, it's not by our special blessings, but because of your bountiful grace that surrounds us. The grace that is on us, O oh Father, has made it possible for us to stand here, to sit where we, to sit on the comfort of our sofas and worship you this morning. We do this acknowledging that there are people with circumstances that are worse than ours. And irrespective of what we're going through, O oh Father, we want to say thank you for making it possible for us to say thank you. Father, we come to you this morning knowing that your word needs scattering throughout the world. You've appointed men and women to go gather the grains, to go spread your word throughout the world. And to do this, O oh Father, we need the means for them to make this a possibility. Father, they're doing a fantastic job to make sure that your word, which is in the Bible, which is in your holy book, is understood by men and women and children around the world. And they have the huge task of taking different languages and putting them, taking the English language and putting them into a language that will best understood by these people. Father, as you go through this, there is a lot of uncertainty that surrounds them. There are a lot of difficulties. There are difficulties in decisions, whether they can translate special words or to transliterate them. There are difficulties around what styles to use. There are difficulties around the meaning of Hebrew or Greek words. There are difficulties even in the variations of the readings in the manuscripts. Father, there are many difficulties. There are political wars that stand on their path. And Father, we, for this, we call upon you. We call upon your name to break down these barriers, O oh Father. Level every exalted places in front of these men and women who have this responsibility to make sure that your word falls on fertile ground. Father, as they sow these seeds, we pray you come and water them so that as they grow and bear fruit, may your word spread and multiply. Father, we also want to pray for our children. The children have been home since Christmas. Father, there are some that will not even be able to fit into their school uniforms. Their shoe sizes would have changed. There's certain serious and basic difficulties that parents will encounter, that children will encounter. There's emotional situations that they face just going back to school. Father, we pray that as, they make, as the government have made the decision for them to go back, make the, made a decision to make this going back a possibility, to make this going back feasible, to go make this going back as safe as can be. And that as the teachers put the measures in place to make the children's coming back a safe, make the school a safe place for them to come back to. Father, may you be with them. May you be with them going out and with them coming in. May you bless them. May you multiply the effort so that, oh Father, as they put the measures in place to make their schools COVID free or COVID safe, Father, may you cleanse. May you be the, the, the one to cleanse the environment. May you be the one to give them the means of how to make the environment even safer. 
that as the children go to school, as the teachers interact with them, and as the children come back to the, to the grandparents, their parents, to the wider family, Father, may they come back knowing that you have been with them and you being with them means that they, has, they are safe. And as the world come together, as we do our bit to counter this, to fight this pandemic, to fight this deadly virus, Father, we pray that you show yourself on us, show yourself to us, so that at the end of this, oh Father, we may pick up the lessons, we may come out with God's blessing, knowing that it's not by our might, but by your grace that we've been able to fight this deadly virus. Come and be with us as a family, as a church, as we continue to worship you. And may your name be praised in heaven and on earth forever and ever. Amen. today's service with prayer. Lord Jesus, cleanse us of all that we do that isn't honouring to you. 
Fill us with your Holy Spirit to glorify you in all that we do and say, that when people look at us, they see you in us. Give us boldness to proclaim your name in this world that doesn't know you or deliberately chooses to ignore you. Give us the courage to walk in your way, even when it goes against the grain, and help us to glorify your name in all we do. Amen. Just a quick reminder to church members that instead of church coffee on Zoom today, we'll be having a church meeting at 11.30 on Zoom. I hope to see you there. Now, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you with those you love and with God's people everywhere, today and forever. Amen. <laughs>